Hi everyone! In today's video, I will walk you through how to operate the CasaCam VS2072 system step by step. First, let me introduce the different parts of the monitor. Here are the antenna. Here is the microphone. Here is the charging indicator, and to the right is the recording indicator. On the side of the monitor, you can see multiple ports. The top one is a USB port. You can insert your USB flash drive here to export files or to have mouse control of the monitor. Below that is a memory card socket. The system comes with a 32GB SD card pre-installed. The system supports up to 122GB. Below that is the battery switch, and at the bottom is the power port. On the back of the monitor, we have a battery compartment, and above it is the speaker. All of the operating menus can be accessed on the touchscreen monitor. Here are some basic operations you may need when you use the system. Tap twice on the screen to change from quad view to single channel view. You can access the intercom function. Press and hold the speaker icon to talk to the camera. Tap twice to exit and return to quad view. Tap once on the screen to view the menu bar at the bottom of the screen. Starting from the left, the first icon is for the speaker. You can turn the volume on or off. Please note that for volume adjustment, you need to go inside the main menu, which we will go over later. The third icon on the menu bar is for zooming in. Tap this icon to enter the two times zoom mode. You can tap any area on the screen to further zoom in. Tap again to go back to normal view. There will be a minus icon on the upper left corner of the screen. Tap the minus icon to exit zoom mode. The last icon is for playback. Tap this icon to access the playback file list. First, select the channel you want to view. Then select the date you want to view. I will use May 13th as an example. You will see a list of recorded files arranged in chronological order. Tap the screen once to see the menu bar at the bottom of the screen. Tap the house icon to access the main system menu. The first icon is for video playback. This is an additional way to access files. The second icon is for system setup. We have seven selections. First is language. Second is time setup. If you choose to sync time with a server for the system, you need to choose the correct time zone where the system is used. You can also manually set up the system by entering date and time here. You can turn on and off daylight savings time, shown as summertime, on the monitor. The third function is wireless internet. To use the remote view feature on your phone or tablet for the system, you need to enable the WLAN on the monitor. Click on Network Setup. We recommend using DHCP for the device. Go to Hotspot List to choose a Wi-Fi network for your device. Input your Wi-Fi password. After you successfully add the device, you can see the network status on the screen. 4. Wireless Channel If the wireless connection between the NVR and your camera is working on your device, there is no need to change the setting here. If there is interference in the wireless connection between the NVR and the camera due to other 2.4 GHz devices in the area, you can try different channels until you find one that works. 5. Camera Audio Enable This is to enable audio for live view and for recording files of each camera. The default setting is on for all channels. If audio recording is not allowed by local law, you can disable audio for recording files. 6. Volume Setup This is used to adjust the volume for live view. You can also turn on and off the volume from the icon on the live view screen. 7. Auto-close. 
This is for the monitor power safe feature. If you enable this feature, the monitor screen will turn off after there's no motion for a designated period of time. For example, if you choose 10 minutes, when there's no motion trigger from the cameras for 10 minutes, the monitor screen will turn off. It will automatically turn on once there's motion from the camera. You can also turn it on by tapping on the screen. If you want to keep the monitor screen on at all times, make sure the auto close feature is disabled. The third icon is for recording schedule. You can set up schedules for motion recording here. The default setting is to enable schedule one for 24 seven motion recording. This means the system will record any motion at any time. If you do not want the system to record all motions all the time, you can modify schedule one. Select channel, day, and time. You can set up multiple schedules for different cameras. A maximum of four recording schedules are available. Storage device. The system records into a micro SD card. It supports up to 122 gigabytes. Storage management. If you purchase your own SD card, you need to format it when you use it on this MVR for the first time. You can format your SD card here. Overwrite. You can use this when the memory card is full. Activating the overwrite function allows you to continue recording new activities. New files will overwrite existing files, starting from the oldest one. Match code. In the match code section, you can pair additional cameras to the NVR. The NVR can then recognize and display videos from them. The cameras that come with the system are already paired. But if you do purchase additional cameras, you need to match them by tapping match code. The fifth icon is for alarm setup. The first function in there is alarm volume setup. Please know that this is for all the cameras. This will allow you to adjust volume for the alarms when there is motion detected. If you do not want an audible alarm for motion, simply turn the volume to zero. Two, mobile split screen. When this feature is enabled, the monitor screen will pop up to full screen view of whichever camera has the motion trigger. Three, alarm setting for individual cameras. You can set up the feature configuration of the motion alarm function for each camera here. I will use channel one as an example. You can use the motion feature to turn on and off the alarm on NBR for motion trigger from a camera. If this is turned off, the NVR will not remind you of motion triggers and the mobile split screen feature will not work. App alarm. You can turn on and off push notifications on the app when there's motion detected from a camera. Sound alarm. You can turn on and off sound alarm for motion. Sensitivity will allow you to adjust motion detection sensitivity for each camera. Area edit. You can use this function to set a mask area for motion detection. For example, here is a private driveway and out here is a public road. I would like to detect motion on my driveway, but I don't want to get alarms from all sorts of traffic on the public road. I can use the mask out feature for the public road to make sure that the security system does not notify me when motion is detected on the public road. Here, Pink means that motion trigger works in this area. And black means that motion trigger does not work in this area. Please make sure to tap the arrow on the top left corner to save and exit. Sound alert interval. You can enter this function to set up the sound alert interval. And this can be really useful in many cases when you know who is outside. For example, if your kids play in the backyard for 30 minutes, you can choose to set the sound alert interval to 10 minutes. This way, you will only receive three alerts instead of being alerted constantly. When the sound alert interval is set to disable, the monitor will alert on every motion detected. The last icon is System Manage. The first thing that you will see here is System Info. You can find relative information for the device on this page. 
For remote access, you can also scan the QR code on this page into the app. This QR code is the same as the QR code on the back of the monitor. Factory setting. This is the reset configurations for this NVR. We offer simple restore and restore all. Simple restore means that the system will keep the pairing status for the cameras, as well as the network settings for the NVR. If you forget your password, you can tap Simple Restore to reset password. Restore All means that the system will reset all the configurations for the system. You will need to pair the cameras with NVR and set up Wi-Fi network connection again. The third function is Change Password. You can reset password for the NVR and the remote app here. Input password used initially and then set up and confirm a new password. 4. Upgrade. This is for upgrading the NVR monitor. You can either upgrade through a USB hard drive locally or upgrade when the NVR is connected to the internet and when there's new software uploaded to the server. IPC Upgrade. You can upgrade your IP camera software both locally and online. Click into Info to check the current version of the software. If you want to upgrade all the cameras, click into Channel and make sure you select all of them. Remember to press Start.